Tonight, Russia wants Apple's source code. Tor says their network was breached and why Twitter bought a deep learning startup. What that is. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 140 for Wednesday, July 30th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by NatureBox. Order great tasting healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy delicious treats like, mm, let's go with cinnamon swirl kettle kernels today. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. Hello all, I'm Sarah Lane and let's get right into the tech feed. The Russian Communications Ministry has proposed in a statement that Apple and SAP give the Russian government access to their source code. Source code, of course, is a set of computer instructions that translate programs into machine-readable instructions for computers. That's to be sure that Apple's and SAP's products are not being used as tools for spying. The ministry says the proposal was designed to ensure the rights of consumers and corporate users to the privacy of their personal data, as well as for state security interests, and that, quote, Edward Snowden's revelations in 2013 and U.S. intelligence services public statements about the strengthening of surveillance of Russia in 2014 have raised a serious question of trust in foreign software and hardware. The ministry cited an over 10-year cooperation with Microsoft as an example of something that works. Microsoft has been sharing its source code for the Windows OS and other products since 2003 with Atlas, which is a technology institution that reports to the ministry. Both Apple and SAP have declined comment. Tor, which is a service used to mask the identity of an internet user, says that its network was breached and it's likely the work of researchers at Carnegie Mellon University, the same researchers that had planned to demonstrate a Tor hack at the conference last week uh, in Vegas, which had been canceled by law lawyers for the university. The researchers couldn't be reached for comment and the Carnegie Mellon lawyers previously said that the research project wasn't yet cleared for public release. Tor stands for the Onion Router. I actually learned that today. And is managed by a nonprofit in Cambridge, Massachusetts. It was originally developed to protect the communications of the U.S. Navy and is still partially funded by the U.S. government. Bloomberg is reporting that Snapchat is in talks with investors, including Alibaba Group, for a round of financing that could value the company at $10 billion. This is citing anonymous sources. However, if the funding goes through, Snapchat would join a pretty small group of startups that are valued in that 11-digit range. House sharing app Airbnb is one. File sharing service Dropbox is another. Car booking app Uber. So it's, again, it's a, it's a small and illustrious group. Snapchat says that its users are now sending more than 700 million snaps per day and more than 500 million stories are viewed daily. Potential financier Alibaba is China's biggest e-commerce company and is preparing to go public on the New York Stock Exchange this year. And it could be the biggest IPO in U.S. history. Interesting times we live in. Microsoft has announced it will start selling the Xbox One to consumers in China starting on September 23rd. Home consoles were previously banned in China after the release of the PlayStation 2. However, game consoles, foreign ones anyway, have been widely available in the country's gray market. Back in 2012, a Chinese motion sensor uh, equipped with a home console called CT510 was released but it actually claimed to be an exercise machine. So this is still a pretty big deal. The base console will retail for about, well, equivalent of 599 US dollars and will come with copies of Power Star Gold, Never Winter Online pre-installed, along with free Xbox Gold Live Gold memberships through March of 2015. 9 to 5 Mac is reporting that in, ahead of Apple's acquisition of Beats Electronics and Beats Music... It's not completed yet, but expected to be at the end of this quarter. The two companies have already begun work on transitioning some employees and resources from Beats to Apple. Anonymous sources tell 9to5Mac that many Beats employees in development and creative roles have been offered positions at Apple, but employees working in support and finance and HR departments may no longer have jobs with some workers actually already being laid off in the last few weeks. Apple has allegedly already begun work on transitioning the Beats music technology to its iTunes infrastructure. 
The Federal Communications Commission has sent Verizon Wireless a letter asking why it's made it a policy to throttle customers with unlimited data plans, like me. FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler, who authored the note, says, quote, I am deeply troubled by your July 25th, 2014 announcement that Verizon Wireless intends to slow down some customers' data speeds on your 4G LTE network starting in October of this year, and, quote, it is disturbing to me that Verizon Wireless would base its network management on distinctions among its customers' data plans rather on network architecture or technology. The FCC is currently weighing how to effectively regulate broadband speeds, wireless spectrum, peering and interconnection, and calls for enhanced net neutrality rules. In response, Verizon issued a statement claiming, quote, the purpose is to ensure that there's capacity for everyone in those limited circumstances and that high users don't limit capacity for others. Coming up, a pretty odd looking copper Brillo pad thing that actually is supposed to keep your computer pretty cool. And up next, I'll talk with Jordan Novet from VentureBeat. He's going to tell us a little bit more about deep learning and why it's Twitter's latest acquisition. But first, you want to snack guilt-free? I know I do. Try Nature Box. Nature Box snacks have zero trans fats, zero high fructose corn syrup, and nothing artificial. Sounds pretty good, right? The company also will send these great tasting snacks right to your door with free shipping anywhere in the U.S. So here's how it works. You click the continue button, and then you choose your subscription option. You've got three to choose from. Then it's time to place your order. Once you're a member, you select which snacks you want each month in your monthly box that's delivered to you. Dietary needs are all taken into consideration, and you can select by taste, savory, sweet, spicy. It just depends on what kind of snacks you like. With Nature Box, your snack is faction is guaranteed. Yeah, I really did say that, but, you know, I'm trying to have fun here. Sriracha roasted cashews, chili munch mix, over 100 healthy snacks to choose from. You can also get 50% off your first box just by going to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. Get 50% off your first box. And thanks to Naturebox for their support of Tech News Tonight. Joining us now is Jordan Novet, staff writer over at VentureBeat. Hey, Jordan. Hey, Sarah. How's it going? Going really well. Thanks for being here. Your first time on TN2. It's my first time. All right. All right. So there's a there's an article uh, one of your colleagues actually wrote up today. Uh, m many uh, tech publications did that Twitter is joining what's called a deep learning trend by acquiring a company called Madbits. Now, Madbits is a deep learning startup uh, that specializes in visual intelligence. It's basically an image search startup. So what do you think Twitter is going to do with this deep learning uh, infrastructure that they now have? We don't know exactly what Twitter wants to do with these guys, but uh, it's a small team. I, I think it might be just two. Um, and we can take some guesses based on the con uh, technology that they're already familiar with. And um, it, it basically does involve image um, analysis. Um, at its core. So uh, if you were to focus, you know, the application of this to any part of Twitter, it is images. All right. So let's say I share an image on Twitter and mm -hmm. for whatever reason, you know, I'm making a joke or, or, or I'm, 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 I'm sending the tweet specifically to another uh, Twitter user. Maybe uh -huh. that you know, if Twitter is trying to figure out what these images mean, what I'm saying provides very little context. Is that the idea here? Is that deep learning will help Twitter not have to hope that I'm using, you know, SEO friendly words? <laughs> no, um, actually. Uh, so let me just explain a tiny bit about deep learning. Um, you need to get a lot of data, a lot of documents uh, like text documents, or you need to get a lot of input from like the words I speak into my phone, mm -hmm. um, or you need to get a lot of pictures. Uh, or a lot of video, um, and you analyze all of that, and you pick up different kinds of features. For example, in images, uh, if you have a picture of, let's say, your water bottle, um, it'll see the cap, it'll see the shape of the bottle, and uh, if you do enough of those uh, water bottle pictures, then if you throw a new water bottle picture at it, it'll say, oh, wow, look at that, it's a water bottle. So basically, it's going to pick up features inside of pictures, and also, um, it's going to probably optimize for certain kinds of pictures 
when you search for pictures. Is this going to help Twitter figure out what topics are trending? Sometimes if an image is widely shared, uh, but it's not something that's, uh, you know, keyword based. Does that change yeah. what ha, it, it, it helps Twitter know more about what we're all doing? OK, so it can be useful for internal stuff. Um, I don't know exactly how they would use it, but um, it is true that it could say, oh, this is a trending kind of picture. There's like everyone sharing a picture of uh, a soccer ball. Um, maybe there's something about soccer that's going on um, because you see the ball that's white and black. Um, so it could really help like trending stuff. That could be awesome. Um, but actually, I think it'll just be about surfacing uh, the best um, pictures in terms of like a lot of color, um, well lit. Um, it could also see you know, clear edges of like a phone. So it, you know, figures out that this has all four sides instead of like, you know, one side or something. Um, and that actually might help uh, searching for images and, you know, playing them more prominently on the uh, Twitter search for images. You know, other companies, Facebook, for example, Google, Microsoft, Baidu, uh, are uh -huh. all using something called deep learning. It's a term not so many people are familiar with, but the company certainly are. You wrote an article today about a deep learning expert that had moved from Google to Baidu. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other applications for deep learning besides image recognition? Okay. Um, I know you, well, I hate Siri uh, because <laughs> Siri never understands what I say. But if, let's say, I go out onto Market Street down there, um, we're here in San Francisco, um, it's actually uh, possible if... Um, you know, people like Andrew Ng at Baidu are able to improve the accuracy of their uh, neural networks, their deep neural networks that are at the heart of deep learning. Uh, it'll be more accurate when I say, hey, get me a cab, um, instead of Siri sucking, you know, basically. So it could improve results for speech. It could improve uh, 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 the processing of words. Um, so this is if you want to uh, improve search engine results, uh, you want deep learning going on, and Google's been doing that. Um, so text analysis is the other big one. And then uh, now you also have um, uh, image uh, improvement. Uh, the term is computer vision. And so these guys learned, actually, from the guy who Facebook um, just brought on, Jan LeCun. Uh, they were students of his at NYU. So basically, Twitter's saying, hey, if we can't get Jan LeCun himself, let's get his students. And that's exactly what happened here. Jordan Novet is the staff writer over at VentureBeat. Thanks so much for joining us, Jordan. Thanks a lot, Sarah. Nice to be with you. Uh, nice at, to be uh, with you, too. Yes. Jordan Novet on Twitter, by the way. Jordan Novet on Twitter. And, of course, you can read Jordan's work at VentureBeat.com. Thanks again. Thanks much. All right. Finally, here's a new innovation from a company called Silent Power. If you haven't heard of them, they've made a tiny little computer. It's also half heat sink with an oversized copper what would you even call that, a blanket type thing on its top side? And it's used to cool the entire machine, which allows it to run entirely without fans. Silent Power says that this computer will include a Core i7 Haswell processor and a discrete graphics card from NVIDIA. So, you know, it's pretty powerful. The Silent Power PC isn't ready to ship yet. It's being crowdfunded, and the company says it's taking pre-orders. They'll be filled if it sells 45,000 euros worth of these computers, which is over about 60,000 US dollars. So good luck to them. I love a silent machine. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us with feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News today. That's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.